G. I'm actually going to drag my fourth finger back and I'm going to place this chord from the top of the chord. I know it's really weird. We're used to starting from the bottom notes and building our hand up from there, but you won't be able to stretch from the B, especially for those of us with tiny hands, from that, that B in first position all the way back down to that G sharp without doing a horrible thing or squeezing the thumb or not playing anything in tune. So I'm going to bring this down, B, D, whole step, F, whole step. Now if you like to vibrate, and I do, then once you've played the bottom notes, release them so that your hand has the ab ability to vibrate the top two notes. your exercise right there to make sure that you know that's a whole step because sometimes we see a shift and we get excited and we think well maybe that's only a half step or maybe I don't have to go quite as far as I think or you're in the heat of battle playing your audition or taping and your hand doesn't want to go as far back as it needs to and so it goes only a half step and it should be a whole step if you've trained yourself muscularly to remember where that shift is and how far you have to go, then in the heat of battle, you won't have to think so closely about that moment. Step two, which is to figure out every double stop. Um, don't worry about the slurs or the rhythms at this point in the game. We're just trying to figure out the fingerings and make them sound good. Uh, so here's a very basic step. We're going to play the bottom note, then the top note, and then the double stop together. Um, make sure you leave your fingers down as much as possible. Alright, so the first one. that way with that exercise throughout the entire etude. Um, but don't try and practice the entire etude at one time. There are a lot of notes. Maybe take a week just to learn the first three lines. It's okay. You have plenty of time. mention um, when you're on the C string this is all on your C string to start you really want to impress your audience with this beautiful C string sound if you didn't like playing on the C string you would be a violist that's what makes us violists so we really love to wallow in that sound and you can really really bring it out so I like to think of really sinking my bow down into the string and not pushing it down. I don't think so much about pressure because pressure ends up sounding like this. It can sound louder, but it doesn't necessarily sound more beautiful. Um, so I really like to think of pulling the, the string um, as I draw the bow. I'm pulling and pushing the sound out. And, uh, and then I also use the bow uh, to make these dynamics. So in the first measure I want to make that crescendo. I use about a third of the bow on the C and then another two-thirds of the bow on the A. And that makes the that makes the crescendo be really obvious without having to push down on the bow to make a crescendo, which doesn't make a very beautiful crescendo. This way it sounds really organic, it sounds really natural. And then extending for 
the harmonic. Um, in the turn, and this applies to all the turns in this piece, we really want the notes to be clear but singing. Um, so I think that it's important that the finger is placed on the string firmly and that you also lift the finger with some energy because that actually allows the string to, to begin vibrating and activates the vibration of the string. So that can really help. So if your turns sound a little muddy, a little mushy, or maybe not quite rhythmically accurate, think about being more rhythmic and more articulate in your left hand, the way you lift your left hand finger. you probably see that in my finger action. So really making sure that that's, that's uh, smooth. Um. for that group was 3-1, three, 3-4, one, three, four, three, one. You can simply use that fingering for the next group of six and the next group of six. So then you can scoot down your third finger to the A, A, 3-1, And then you can simply scoot back to first position and do the same thing. Three one, three four, three one. is actually a G because we're in tenor clef. So after you play this note, reach out with your second finger and, and pluck that. Let's practice that. Just pluck that G string holding three and one down because you're going to have to play those at the same time that you're holding it with the bow. In fact, let's play three and one. And try to pluck it without it affecting your bow. So pluck in the middle of your bow stroke like that. So take the time to practice very slowly. Practice makes permanent. And when you're learning anything, whether it's an etude or a piece of music or a Bach cello suite, if you learn and put the building blocks into place very slowly, slow practice means fast playing. <laughs> Minor. Back to first position. Oh, yeah. 